In this video, I'm going to walk you through the journal entries to record the flow of costs for a manufacturer that uses job order costing. So let's say our manufacturer is a company called Custom Cap Furniture, and we have the following transactions that occurred, and we need to journalize them. So let's just go one by one, and we'll record journal entries. So we buy $20,000 of raw materials for cash. So we're going to debit raw materials inventory, and I'm abbreviating here to save space. And we're going to credit cash. If we didn't pay cash and we bought it on credit, we'd credit accounts payable. So we're going to debit raw materials inventory for $20,000 and credit cash for $20,000. Next up, we take $17,000 of those materials and we put them into production. We start working on them. And let's say they're all used as direct materials. So we're going to debit something called work in process inventory and then we're going to credit raw materials inventory. So we're just transferring the cost from one inventory account to another inventory account. Work in process is just inventory that we're working on. It's not completed yet, but we're, we're processing it. Okay, so the raw materials inventory account, if we were to do T account, it now have a balance of $3,000 because we started at 20 and we went down to 17. Next up, we're going to incur some labor costs and let's just assume that these are direct labor costs. Okay, so we've got some direct labor. So as we do some work on the materials, and it's 10,000, it's 8,000 plus 2,000. We separate it out for jobs. I'll show you why later. Okay, so we've got 10,000. So we're going to debit work in process inventory again. And again, it will be $10,000. And now we see that, okay, well, we're going to have some, we have to pay these employees. We could pay them cash, or let's put here wages payable. Let's say that we didn't actually pay them yet. And so we'll have wages payable of $10,000. Now, let's go on to our next transaction. So we use $100 of glue in order to help build the unit. So that's going to be, because it can't be traced to specific jobs, we're going to include that as manufacturing overhead. And whenever we have actual manufacturing overhead costs, we're going to debit the manufacturing overhead account. Okay, so I'm going to debit, and I'm just going to put MOH, manufacturing overhead. Okay, and then what am I going to credit? Well, I'm going to, let's just assume that the glue, we have a, a manufacturing supplies account. Okay. Uh, sometimes people will actually include like the glue and in, as in part of raw materials and then take it out of raw materials and say it's an indirect material, but to make things simple, let's just do it this way. Okay, so we've got $100 of actual manufacturing overhead, and then we credit supplies for $100. Next up, number five, so we are going to incur $2,000 of salary costs for the production supervisor. So because this person is supervising production, this is a manufacturing cost, but it's not direct labor because they're a supervisor. They're not actually building our product. So this is going to be manufacturing overhead. Okay, so we're gonna have manufacturing overhead. And again, it, it, it could be salaries payable, or we could just credit cash. So let's just say we'll, we'll credit cash. It depends on what actually happened. Did we actually pay the cash or not? Let's assume that we did. So we're gonna have 2,000. Here we're debiting manufacturing overhead and then we're crediting cash. Uh, next up is we incur some janitorial costs for the factory because it's related to the factory. Again, this is a product cost, but janitorial costs are not directly traceable to the product. So that's going to be manufacturing overhead. And let's again assume that we paid cash. So we're gonna debit manufacturing overhead for $900, credit cash for $900. Now we incur some janitorial costs for the sales department. Now, because it's a sales department, notice, just because it's janitorial costs in each case, it's treated differently. This is for the sales department. This is not a product cost. This is a period cost. So it's a period cost. So it's just, it's just going to be expensed immediately. I'll just put it under SG&A expense. And again, I'll, I'll just assume that we paid cash. So we've got $700. So we debit SG&A expense and then credit cash. Notice that period costs are expensed as they are incurred. Okay, now we're going to have, let's see, where are we? So number eight, so we're gonna have some factory rent. So that is going to be manufacturing overhead. We're gonna have manufacturing overhead and we'll just assume that we pay cash for the rent. So that's $4,000. And now it's going to get a little bit different here. We're going to now apply some manufacturing overhead to jobs. Now you might be saying, hey, wait a minute. We've been, we've had manufacturing overhead here, manufacturing overhead here and here. 
Okay, and then also here. So we have four times we had a journal entry regarding manufacturing overhead, but this is actual. These were actual manufacturing overhead costs, those four transactions. Now when we're applying it, it's using our predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. I'm not going to tell you what the rate is and stuff like that because I don't I want to focus on the journal entries, but we'll just say that we apply 5,000 to job A and 1,000 to job Z. And again, this is on the pre this is not the actual overhead, this is the applied. And the applied overhead, so so when we have the actual overhead, we debit manufacturing overhead, but when we apply overhead, we are going to credit. And let me let me change colors. So we're going to credit manufacturing overhead and what do we debit? work in process inventory. So when we apply manufacturing overhead to jobs, we're actually just going to put we're going to put it right to work in process inventory and then we credit the manufacturing overhead account for $6,000, okay? Now, job A is completed. Why is that important? Well, we're going to need to take the costs associated with job A. We're going to need to take them from work in process inventory to finished goods inventory. So that's why I was tracking what were the costs for job A. So we had 12,000, then we had 8,000 of direct labor, and then we had 5,000 here. So 12,000 plus 8,000 plus 5,000 is $25,000. So we're gonna take it out of work and process inventory, and then we're gonna put it in finished goods inventory. Again, we're just transferring from one inventory account to another and it was $25,000. So assets are unchanged by this, but we're just transferring from one inventory account to another. Now we sell job A. So now we say, okay, we gotta take this out of finished goods because we've actually sold it. We've sold it, so now we're gonna recognize cost of goods sold. So we're gonna debit cost of goods sold for $25,000 and we're gonna credit finished goods inventory for $25,000. Now, some of you might have noted that we have a difference between the actual amount of manufacturing overhead and then the amount that we actually applied. So we applied $6,000. Okay, this is the amount of manufacturing overhead that was applied. But if you actually add up, the actual manufacturing overhead was 7,000. Okay, so the actual overhead was $7,000, but we only applied $6,000. So we underapplied the manufacturing overhead. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't apply enough manufacturing overhead to jobs. We undershot it by $1,000. And in the next video, I'll show you how to record journal entries to account for that as well.